Good morning, everybody. It's uh, day 15. Agita is uh, very nicely settled in her cubby tent uh, pink thing. And I was lying next to her for the, the past little while. And the babies uh, have come out of their room. Uh, we have a new routine now. They wake me up, particularly Elsie, wakes me up at 6 o'clock, 6.30 in the morning. And he just, you know, he just says, meows and meows and meows until I get up. And then... Um, I let them out of their room, Agitha comes, we all have snack, well, they all have, I don't eat at 6 o'clock in the morning, but they all have um, uh, treats in the uh, uh, kitchen, and then uh, we all go back to bed. <laughs> Agitha goes back to bed in her room, and uh, I go back to bed in uh, Bibi's room with them, and uh, we sleep until about 10 or 11, and then I get up and I spend some time, an hour or two, in Agitha's room. Well, the babies are, are here. So one here, one baby in the uh, uh, hole on the cat condo, the other baby there, you know? And that, that seems to be our morning routine now. So now, instead of breakfast, wet food for breakfast, they're going to have wet food for lunch because they already had their snacks six o'clock in the morning. So now they're going to have their uh, lunch and I'm going to have my breakfast and lunch. You get all kinds of snacks and... Uh, all is well. Tomorrow, uh, I'm going to see the uh, dental surgeon guy. So, uh, hopefully set an appointment for the extractions of the teeth. So far, so good, you know. So, we'll keep you posted. D15. Okay, bye for now. From the uh, four of us. Uh, and Agita in her, in her bed. She will come out for some family time, you know, after uh, a few minutes, after they have lunch. Okay, uh, bye for now. It's now a couple of hours later, and uh, I spent, uh, sweetie, sweetie, don't, don't go to your sister's room, sweetheart. No, this is not a good thing. Come, come, come. Wait. It's okay, sweetie. Your, your brother is uh, now back out of the room. You can have the room to yourself. We'll keep the door closed for now. Whenever you really come out and join us for family together this time, just let me know. Both of them are out here. So, after the last uh, taping, I spent... Uh, an hour and a half in the baby's room and they came and they cuddled with each other and they cuddled with me and they settled very nicely and I petted them and it was a very good reinforcer for me. Reminded me of why I'm putting so much struggle into uh, returning you know, to family life, you know, and all of that and everything else. Um, and then I spent a few minutes in Nagita's room, but then she got up. And when she saw the kids were, the babies were sitting right outside the door, she didn't really want to come out. So babies were sitting on this side, uh, Agitha was in her room with the door open, and then one snuck in, as you saw, <laughs> and then I got him out. So, so, but she will come for family time in a bit. And the other thing is today, so I'm going to feed, uh, feed the kids, have a breakfast myself, uh, just uh, cheese and bun. And the other thing is today I am going to see the uh, dentist, uh, the other dentist with the one that does the uh, anesthetic uh, surgery to remove the three teeth. So I'll get an estimate and hopefully set a date if all goes well. So that's at two o'clock. So I've got a little time to prepare. Anyway, bye for now. I'll keep you posted. I'll let you know how the uh, dental surgery uh, you know, appointment goes. Bye for now. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, kids. Uh, good morning, everyone. It's about 7 o'clock in the morning, and nowadays uh, the babies wake me up at about 6.30. I, I actually get up myself now. We all get up at about 6.30 in the morning, and then I lie in bed for another half an hour or so, and the babies know that I'm going to get up for, the, you know, for a very early uh, family together this time. And I either comes out of her room. Uh, she's in her room all night with the door open. Uh, she can uh, she can sleep anywhere in the in the condo, but she chooses to sleep in her room with the door open. But uh, when uh, when we get up at seven o'clock, at six thirty, she comes out to the hall, and then I shut the door just so the baby's not going to her room, and you know, and then she'll free. So we have a little family together this time. So I'm going to give them some treats, have some cola myself, uh, and uh, you know, um, take my. Uh, Advil, because it's still got a bit of tooth pain, but I see the oral surgeon today. That's the thing that's happening. It is day 16. 
But today is day 16. It's also the day I have my appointment with the oral uh, surgeon uh, and hopefully set a date for the extraction. So, but uh, we'll find out when so it's at 2 o'clock. So I'm going to... We will, we'll have our uh, morning uh, family togetherness time and snacks and call off a dad and then um, uh, we go back to bed for another couple of hours and then we get up and then we have some more family time and I give them uh, breakfast or lunch, you know, uh, uh, wet food. So anyway, this is our, uh, uh, our routine for now. Uh, I don't mind. I'm not in the morning. I'm here in the um, office of the dental surgeon. I don't think he's going to actually examine me. He's got the x-rays already from my own dentist. So I think I'm just going to see him here in, in the office. And he's going to, uh, you know, uh, go over the x-rays and uh, give me an estimate and stuff like that. So anyway, just waiting. We'll let you know how it goes. Bye for now. Hello, everybody. It's me. Here I am in the mini again. And I just had the consult with the... With the um, uh, dental surgeon, uh, nice guy, uh, quite young. I was, thinking, I was looking at his uh, degrees. I think he graduated only about ten years ago, but um, uh, but uh, seems to know what he's doing. A little, it's a little complication here, you know. Uh, when I filled in the online form, it did ask, you know, uh, have you been treated for addictions? And I said no because technically I have not actually gone to rehab or been diagnosed or gone to, you know, uh, done, you know, any formal diagnosis of addiction. Um, but, you know, I, um, uh, but on the form it also did ask recreational drug use and it, it listed several possible drugs that you might do recreationally. Like, and they say marijuana, eh, ecstasy, cocaine, you know. Um, so, um, uh, it, it lists, uh, it, it listed, uh, you know, it did not list other things like, oh, it listed heroin too. It did, you know, but it didn't list things like, um, crystal meth or, you know, because I assume that if you do that, it's not considered recreational. <laughs> but anyway, uh, out of those, there was only one. And, you know, I think people know what my substance of choice is. I have a podcast on it, you know. So, um, the, uh, so, um, um, and I, I put down, yes, I said, you know, that particular, the white stuff. Uh, and they said, you know, there's, uh, um, every few months now, the whole thing here is, that there was uh, 20 months, and when I was doing it, when, you know, uh, like uh, two, three years ago, before I went uh, clear for uh, 19.5 months, it was still not daily use. It was every few weeks. Now, um, it was, you know, like uh, eight weeks, you know, uh, 12 weeks, uh, sometimes two weeks, you know, but it was, uh, it was weeks, it was intermittent, you know, it was not daily. Um, but I still consider it, and this is where we get into kind of tricky uh, uh, territory, I consider it to be an addiction. Some people say, and I've been told this, you know, uh, somebody on a recent binge uh, and somebody who was a daily user of another substance and somebody else I know who said, you know, you do it every few weeks. What's the big deal? You do it recreationally, you know, um, yeah, you don't do it all the time. Every, you know, and you can afford it, you know, uh, um, uh, you don't work, you, you want to go have some fun every few weeks, every couple of months, you go have a little binge. Now, uh, you can do it recreationally. But the, the problem with me is being addictive is that if I do it once, I don't want to stop. <laughs> I keep going and I go all night. And then to stop the next day becomes very difficult. And I think people have seen in my podcasts what a struggle it has been daily. You know? <laughs> the rechanneling and the, uh, the amount of effort I have to put into not becoming a daily user, you know? So that's why I do consider myself uh, addictive. I do consider it an addiction, even though it hasn't been formally diagnosed and I haven't I've been to rehab for reasons that I've mentioned before. Um, and then the amounts, when you look at it that way, the amounts aren't that much. They're, you know, they're, they're like every few months. And the, the amounts end up being similar to the amounts of somebody who do, does it recreationally. But the difference is that for me, to stay at that and not become a daily user takes a lot of effort, you know, and a lot of energy, you know, and then also my age, you know, and all of that. So I did put down, uh, now, 
that became an issue because uh, the doctor looked at the, uh, the, 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 the forms and service history and he said, because you uh, are a recreational user, you know, of uh, substances. And he said that, that applies to marijuana as well. Marijuana and, you know, the, the, you know, the, the lighter one and, and also the, you know, the other recreational drugs. He says, you know, he can't give anesthetic because he says if you, if you uh, even use recreationally, and I said, you know, the amounts, there was a long, long gap. There was, there was many months. And then there was, you know, um, um, youth in September. And then there was, uh, you know, uh, clear for till end of December. And then there were two, <laughs> two recursions, relapses or whatever. Um, uh, so, but he said, if you, if you use recreationally, he, he just does not want to give anesthetic, total anesthetic. And it also becomes a lot more expensive. And you have to set the date when the anesthetic, uh, anesthesiologist is there and the nurse is there and most of the nurses are now in hospitals. So, um, uh, he recommended, uh, just laughing gas. And my thing is, if it's just going to use laughing gas, my own dentist can do that, you know? Uh, and my own dentist can do, um, extractions. However, if there is a problem, if 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 when he pulls the teeth out, uh, the tooth out, and uh, there's a, a tear in the sinuses, in the you know, uh, this guy is qualified to take some skin from the uh, cheek and and you know and patch it up. He does uh, oral surgery or facial surgery, something like that. So maxi facial or something surgery. So he's allowed to do that. He's qualified to do that. My dentist may not be able to. So. Um, and then there's another option. He can give me a sedation, an IV, uh, not as strong as an anesthetic. And I will, I'll be, I'll be mostly out of it, but he can, I can still answer questions. And if he asks, you know, is this, uh, 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 can you feel this? I'll be able to say yes, no, I will not be completely out, you know? Now, that adds another $500 to the procedure, you know? Uh, but then a problem with that is, if I go that route, then I, he won't let me uh, not even take a taxi because you have to have somebody come with you and uh, be with you for four hours afterwards and to drive you back. And that's going to be a little bit of a problem, you know? So, um, uh, he seems to think laughing gas is okay, you know? And I've had laughing gas before. My own dentist is qualified to give it. He's done it. And I'm actually okay with it, you know, with the freezing of the mouth and the laughing gas. And they pull out three teeth at once. The, the estimate is not unreasonable, you know? Um, before, not counting, uh, and the, 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 the surgery on, uh, you know, doing the, the grafting or whatever, the, uh, the sinuses. That's only if uh, uh, there's a hole when they pull the teeth out. It's possible that there won't be. But if there is a hole and they need to do that, uh, then that adds $400 to the procedure. Otherwise, it's only like thirteen, fourteen hundred dollars $1,400, you know? Uh, so thirteen, fourteen hundred dollars $1,400 for re re uh, removing the uh, three teeth. And then um, possibly 400 for the, uh, uh, you know, uh, if there is a hole in the sinuses and he has to patch it. And then, um, and he does not recommend this at all, $560 for sedation. Not anesthesia, but uh, IV sedation. And again, it would have to be on certain days when the nurse can come. And he won't let me uh, drive or take a taxi. He says, you know, I won't let you take a cab. You have to have a person with you. I think I had a friend who had a procedure some time ago. Uh, a colonoscopy, and they said the same thing, and I think I drove, you know, this is a long time ago. But, uh, so that's, um, so if, 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 if I get the sedation and the, uh, uh, there's a hole and he has to patch it, it's 2400 bucks. If not, it's, uh, it's only about 13, 14, 1400 bucks, you know? So it's not expensive, you know? Now, in the meanwhile, he wants me to get a cleaning because he thinks that there might be some cavities and the lower teeth. And when we're doing it, we might as well do everything at once. So um, he wants me to go back to my own dentist and uh, have him uh, have somebody have a, a hygienist clean and then have my own dentist look at it and look at look at the teeth and see if there's anything he can do. And I will get his advice. I do trust him. I mean, this guy seems to know what he's doing, and the price is not unreasonable, you know? Uh, but then, if it's just laughing gas, and my dentist can do it, and I trust my dentist, and I know him, and I've been going to him for years, um, why wouldn't I just go there? Now, the only, the only thing, that, the only real question is that if there is a hole in the sinuses, uh, you know, if, if, when he pulls it out, 
will my dentist be able to patch it? Because he doesn't have the qualifications, I think, for that, which this guy does. So that's uh, that. those are the things I have to discuss with my own dentist. And in the meanwhile, so that means I've booked with my dentist for a cleaning and for a consult with him in a week, exactly a week. And the antibiotic seems to have finally kicked in a week after I stopped taking it. There's still a little bit of pain every day, but I just take Advil uh, once a day and it pretty much clears it. And then uh, sometimes I have to take it at night as well. So I can manage for the next week. Now, they've also said very specifically, particularly if you're getting the sedation, no substances, not even marijuana, before two weeks because there could be a, and that's a serious push, and we, I've discussed this before, is that, you know, this this whole dental thing in the procedure is also a push. Yeah, and he says that could be a very serious, and I said, you know, so far so good, and it does work, and he said this is a serious push because you could be in uh, serious health issues if you um, have recreational drugs in your system, and then you get a uh, sedative, whatever. So... Um, I don't know if that applies to laughing gas, but still, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take it as if it does apply to laughing gas. So I'm going to count this as another push for at least a few more weeks. You know, there's, you know, no matter how strong the cravings get, uh, I can't, no, no matter what. And then I've, I've got all the other pushes, my kids and everything else. So that's, uh, you know, that's been what's happening. I will probably go home. Uh, I'll get some takeout on the way now that I, you know, this thing is over. At least I know where I stand. And then, um, and that whole recreational use thing. I, uh, some time ago when I was looking into rehab, uh, there was one place where, uh, and I met the guy for a coffee and he said himself, he said, you know what? I don't think, uh, it, uh, it's going to work for you. You, you know, you're not going to, you're not going to be able to, uh, you know, last in our rehab. That's, you know, you're kind of too independent in your thinking. He said, this is not going to work, but we discussed it and, um, uh, and I did say at that time, this was some time ago, it was, I'd started drinking again as a controlled burn. And his take on that was, you know, the sort of standard 12 step, you know, uh, a traditional thing is that once you cross the line from recreational use to addiction, then you have to have total abstinence. So not only the, the drug of choice, but also you can't go back, you can't do, uh, you know, even drinking or marijuana or, or less so-called lighter drugs, you know. Um, yeah, it, it, the, the, the party line is once you're a, uh, um, once you've crossed that line for, uh, from recreational use to uh, addiction, um, it has to be total abstinence. You know, you can't have the occasional binge. And I, I can kind of testify to that. I, I do have the my occasional binge, but everybody, I think, has seen how difficult it is to stop. It can be done, but it takes a lot of effort day by day, day by day, day by day, day by day, and all the pushes and everything else. So it's just it's just a lot of effort. <laughs> uh, so um, anyway, uh, um, maybe we'll discuss this more in a future podcast. So for now, I'm going to pick up some takeout. Um, and there's a nice Sichuan place nearby. So I'll pick up some takeout, go back to the kids, and then I will probably post tonight because we've got sort of big news here. Okay, uh, bye for now. I'm here at this such one place in uh, Vaughan, not far from where the uh, dental uh, surgery office was, and I'm getting a takeout uh, such one shrimp with rice and uh, a big bowl of noodle soup shrimp. So you can have some today, and I think with this cold weather, I think a nice big bowl of soup will be good. So I'll have that later for my supper at home. So you're allowed to wait inside here. The mall is actually open. The the COVID screen at the door. So maybe I'll just go. I haven't been in a mall in quite a while. So maybe I'll just go take a quick browse while I'm waiting for the food. Okay, bye for now. Lots of human kid stores and, you know, uh, women's clothing stores and, you know, fancy clothing stores. You know, uh, nothing for the Nutty Professor. The Nutty Professor shops at uh, Black Friday, five times oversized uh, coat things like I'm wearing today. So I don't think, no, mall shopping is not my thing. I think I'm just going to wait inside. I'll find a pet smart afterwards. Uh, you know, uh, go see for this, uh, some nice um, gourmet cat food and treats for the kids. Um, there is one somewhere here in Vaughan. So I'll do that and then head home. Bye for now. Not too surprisingly, they wouldn't let uh, me use the washroom in the uh, restaurant. The diner in part, of course, is closed. But she said, oh, there's a public washroom uh, right uh, across the hall. So I came here and it was fairly clean. 
But you know what? I guess there's a lot of human kids in the uh, in the suburbs because there's a lot of human kid stores. You know, it's like every second story something for human kids. Uh, but I don't see, you know, there's no uh, PetSmart. I don't see any pet. I don't see any cat uh, food stores in here. So. I don't know, maybe the suburbs is a lot of human kid things and less cats. Anyway, bye for now. Got back a few minutes ago and we're having um, family together this time with Agita here in the hall. And one of the babies is on the dining table. And the other baby is on the floor here in the, um, in the dining room. Uh, now, um, I'm going to have some of the soup I got. It's, you kind of assemble it yourself. They give you the noodles and the, the onions and all of that stuff in one bowl and the shrimp. And then the, uh, the, the liquid soup thingy uh, broth in another uh, Tom Yung uh, soup. So I've got, I put the uh, shrimps in and I added some green chilies, of course. So let's see how it's turned out, you know. And I've also got a Sichuan shrimp with rice for later. So uh, and there, there should be, there's quite a lot of food. There should be enough for tomorrow as well. Anyway, I'm going to, I'm going to have this. And then later tonight, I'll probably just uh, work on journal entries, relax with the kids, and I will edit and post this tomorrow. So anyway, bye for now. I'm watching the remixed version of uh, Apocalypse Now, and we're having family together this time. Agitha was in her room, but she came out uh, a few minutes ago and she settled on one cat condo. And I think she was a little pissed off that the taller condo was already taken by one of the babies. So she's uh, settled on one of the, uh, the on the lower cat condo, and uh, uh, one of the babies is on the higher cat condo. He's getting up now. And then the other one is sitting on the floor here in the living room. So, very civilized. I'm watching a good movie, and my three kids are pretty much in the same space. Uh, bye for now. I will uh, tape a bit more tomorrow and edit and post. Okay, so today I think was day 16. Bye for now. Good morning, everybody. It's 7.30 a.m. And uh, the babies have got up and they wanted to come out to have some family time with their uh, sister and uh, have some snacks. Uh, so I just, uh, um, I got up, I lay in bed for half an hour while uh, Elsie particularly was by the door going, we're up, it's time, to, it's time for family time in the morning. So now I let them out and they both uh, um, come here into the uh, living room. Now, they haven't realized yet where their sister is. And there is Agitha. She's in her new hidey spot. And that's where she spent the night. You know? So, and uh, Agitha is just uh, remaining in there. They, they haven't quite realized where she is. When they do realize, <laughs> they will bug her until she comes out and spends some time with us. So, I'm going to have a little family time, uh, some snacks. And then um, uh, and they're going to check. Because they were going, where's, where's sister, where's sister? But uh, well, as soon as they find her, you know. Uh, but for now, it's better that she's uh, she's got her hidey spot. And uh, we'll have our uh, morning, uh, you know, early morning family time snacks. And then we'll all go back to bed. And I'm pretty sure that Agitha is going to come out in a couple of minutes when they discover where she is. So good morning, Agitha. Don't, don't believe your sister. They haven't figured it out yet. So, anyway, uh, I will uh, take a bit more later. It's day, I think, 17 today. Okay, bye for now. Yes, they figured it out. Uh, I knew it wasn't, wasn't going to take long. Yeah. Yes, of course, your sister is in hiding. You don't need to bug her. It's just a couple of minutes later, and Agitha has come out of the hiding spot and is on her perch. So uh, we've got uh, both the babies are uh, going to spend a little time, uh, family time with them. The other one is here. I gave them a couple of, days, uh, of uh, snacks. So we're going to have some more snacks, spend a little bit more time, um, fa uh, early morning family time, and then we'll all go back to bed. <laughs> Good morning, sweetie. Good morning, Agitha. Your, your brothers woke you up. You know, uh, that's a nice spot. You can sit up there while the, uh, 
the BBs play a bit and then they're going to go back into their room and I will go back into their room and nap and then we'll leave you alone for another couple of hours. Okay, bye for now. We'll, we'll talk again soon when I... Uh, um, I'm going to say a little bit more about today being day 17 and the whole business with the, uh, you know, uh, uh, about the about the teeth and all of that stuff. And, um, and then I will edit and post. So it'll be a day 17 podcast. Uh, so anyway, um, bye for now from the four of us. It's now about 20 minutes later. Everybody had some family time and some snacks and uh, babies are back in their room. And Agita is in her room, so she's letting me spend some time on right on the <laughs> edge of her bed. She's on her corner, I'm on this side, so we've got some social distance here. But I am spending some, uh, some time with Agita in her room, and then I'll go back to the baby's room. Okay, bye for now. I spent some time in Agita's room with her, and then I moved back here, and uh, the, both the babies came and cuddled uh, for a while, and now uh, Elsie just got up, and uh, uh, Finn is here to pet Finn a bit more, and then we're going to get up. This is our, our second getting up of the morning, but uh, we've had, uh, uh, this is what I call appreciation of sober family time, ASFT. And in uh, previous patap, I think I called uh, these these uh, moments in the morning with uh, w when I just had the Gita, and then when I got these two as well, I think I called them uh, uh, daily uh, daily sober focus points. You know, so waking up on day seventeen, and this is a major daily sober focus point, uh, just being sober and uh, enjoying time with the kids. You know, so. Uh, we made it to day 17, and as I keep saying, these are my main <laughs> pushes, the main reasons to put all the effort that I put into minimizing the uh, excursions um, on a day-by-day -day basis. So, I haven't started the editing yet. I had my own breakfast. Of, uh, I fed the kids. Uh, Gita doesn't seem to be interested in her um, wet food this morning, uh, uh, but uh, she's got lots of dry hair. I just moved it up onto the counter because a couple of the babies have pushed their way into... I just came to check on um, Gita and uh, if she had uh, eaten her wet food yet. Um, and uh, both the babies, well, one baby pushed his way in and then they said, okay, other one you might as well come in too. So they're wondering about so this one there. This is, a, I guess, a step forward too. And Agitha is not totally panicking. She's not thrilled, but she's sitting on her bed. Uh, and the other one went out by himself, you know. Uh, so come. Both the babies came out of Agitha's room without my having to lift up the mattress and grab them from under the bed, as was the case when they were a bit younger. So we've got the one, two... And Agitha is now out of her room. Three kids, uh, family together this time. And then uh, let Agitha back into her room and see if she wants more of her uh, wet food. If not, I'll just throw it out, you know. Um, I have to go get some more wet food that everybody likes. Yes, go up there. Good idea. Very good idea. Okay. So, uh, family together this time. One, two, and three kids. Okay. Bye for now. I think that now I am going to... Uh, start editing this and uh, we'll post it before I keep adding on and adding on. So anyway, uh, day 17, all is well here. We've got the three kids sitting uh, quite civilized in the hall, all within like a um, three-foot radius. Isn't that amazing? Anyway, bye for now from the four of us. Bye for now. <laughs>